Hey, it's Mark Weiss. When I was a kid, one of our neighbors was uh, an airline pilot, uh, a senior airline pilot. And I recall uh, an episode during which there was a, a pilot strike. They were striking for uh, more money, obviously. The resolution was interesting. What the union and the airline agreed to was a two-tier compensation system, a, a bifurcated system, in which senior pilots, like my neighbor, would get some raise. And from then on, on, from then out, all new pilots would be paid at a much lower rate, pursuant to a different system, which would never really bring them to the same high salary level uh, that my uh, that my neighbor enjoyed. So how'd they get away with it? Well, they got away with it because there were only a, hand f a handful of airlines, in other words, big plane airlines, and there was a union representing all of them. The to-be-hired in the future pilots weren't members of the union, so they couldn't vote against it. If somebody wanted to be a big plane pilot, then they wanted to be a big plane pilot, and compensation was just not going to be what it used to be. That's just the way it was going to happen. I saw something today um, in a legal online newspaper, newsletter, concerning the negotiation by the, um, not the, not the negotiation, but the announcement by, uh, by the handful of very large law firms which um, compete for new hires by offering higher and higher salaries, pushing numbers up to the $200,000 level for brand new lawyers. When they do that in order to keep the rest of their employed lawyers from immediately jumping ship, they have to raise all of their salaries too. Huge compensation pressure and apparently some law firms are wondering how oh, they're raising rates, how they're going to pay them without reducing partner compensation in order to pay for it, which will then create pressure on the partnership to keep partners. You know, this is something that also plays out in medical groups. This notion of being able to meet current salary demands in, quote, the market in order not to lose, in order to, re to recruit, but also the issue of how that impacts retaining both their existing employees and their partners. You know, the medical group situation, for example, is very different from the airline situation. It's not quite as easy to jump to a bifurcated system uh, because there are many, many medical groups, many, many employers of one sort or another. It's not like the four or five major carriers uh, at the time in the United States uh, and one single union uh, that was negotiating on behalf of all the employees. Uh, there are solutions, though, to the um, issue of uh, increasing employee or subcontractor compensation, uh, but they don't all involve what's being paid. Many of them are soft factors that can easily or more easily be implemented than completely robbing from Peter to pay Paul. So think outside of the box when it comes to solving that problem of how to recruit without destroying your retention. If you want to discuss how this can play out for you, give me a call or send me an email. Talk soon.